The girl opened her eyes, and the first thing she saw in front of her was four people, two men and two women. The girl was frightened, which attracted the attention of others. She did not realize where she was. The only thing she remembered was falling asleep in the attic last night. She wondered how she ended up in this mansion. The only thing the girl expected was to be beaten and immediately prepared herself to endure the beating. Suddenly, a woman addressed the girl affectionately. She called her her favorite little daughter and held out her hand. The woman asked the girl to look at her mother for once, but the girl was still puzzled. She didn't understand where she was and where her attic was and also what this place was. She was very much frightened. The only thing she remembered was that she closed her eyes and the intense pain. The woman said that there was very little time left as the first manifestation of the ability was very short. The woman asked the girl to remember one thing, even though it was very hard for her right now. The woman promised the girl to meet again and also told her that they are her true family. After all, they are the people who will love her more than anyone else. But the girl did not believe this, for until yesterday she had been living in the slums doing dirty work, and for her, a family is what she wants to have. The girl said it was some kind of dream, but the other woman expressed that it was real. The woman promised to meet with the girl soon. The woman explained that at first her older brother and sister would bother her and it would upset the girl, but she would have to wait a little while for the day to come when her sister and brother would love her more than anyone else. Suddenly, the girl was hugged by a man from the back and covered her eyes with his hand and then took the girl in his arms. The girl didn't understand what someone who should be preparing for a coronation ceremony was doing here. The girl reminded him that he was supposed to leave the first meeting to the family. The girl asked the man to be careful not to show the girl his face, as she shouldn't know too much about the future. The man replied that he couldn't stand by when his beloved was in such a state and carried the girl away. The man explained that today he was to become emperor and the girl would become empress. When the girl opened her eyes, she saw a beautiful village with people in front of her. The man inquired about the girl's future. After all, it was she who made him emperor, and they love each other truly. And when the girl returns to her own time, there will be a period with countless difficulties. What the girl has achieved is so amazing that the imperial family will want to get her. Still, she would follow the great path and millions of people would respect and admire her the man promised that the girl would go forward without doubt and she would be loved and happy, but the girl doubted this very much. The girl's heart thumped very hard. The man said that it seems that the time has come and magic began to appear around the girl. Finally, the man said that they would meet in the future and covered the girl's eyes, calling her beautiful Grazia, and also advised her not to learn to play chess as it annoyed her that she would constantly be called to play. Then the girl woke up. She thought it had all been a dream. She was in the attic again. The girl accepted that this could not be her reality. But at the same time, her heart was still beating very hard. It was curious who these people were, after all. She already had a family. Suddenly, someone at the door started banging very hard. The girl was frightened. Then a man burst into the attic and started calling the girl rude words. He was angry because the girl had not washed his clothes as he had asked, calling them useless. The man was disappointed that the girl was too young to sell her. When he saw that she continued to sit like that, he began to shout even louder. The girl looked at her reflection in the water. She was glad she had gotten away before the man would have started beating her. The girl's hands were very cold from washing in the cold water. No matter how many clothes she washed, it still left her dirty because she could not find soap in the slum. The girl started thinking about that dream again. She realized that it was so beautiful, like a dream. She thought about those people who called her their family, for with the exception of one, they were very much alike. They all had black hair and violet eyes in common. But in the girl's family, everyone's hair and eye color was different. Her mom and dad had brown eyes, the most common eyes in the empire, which are less common but the girl herself had violet eyes. Just the thought of a real family made the girl's heart flutter. She came to her senses and realized that if she didn't finish her laundry on time, she would be beaten again, and she really didn't want that. 
she decided to do all the laundry quickly and then get on with the cleaning and cooking. She decided she had absolutely no time to daydream, and she didn't want her parents to beat her up again. Suddenly the girl was noticed by a man passing by. He was glad that he found her. Then he approached the girl and greeted her. He made sure that the girl actually had purple eyes, then asked her if she wanted to hear something interesting. The girl thought that this uncle looked like a bandit. She was at a loss. The man confessed that her father had told her something the other day while he was drunk. He said that he had killed a nobleman or something like that once long ago. But the weird thing was that the nobleman was walking around unaccompanied, and on top of that, he had killed a grown male aristocrat, someone who had been learning how to use a sword since early childhood. Oh, and how could one forget about an aristocrat in a slum alone? So the man thought the girl's daddy was lying to him and listened with one ear. But then in the temple he heard something entertaining, after which he handed the girl a magic crystal ball. The man shared that it was a low-level magic item. He also shared that he stole it a long time ago to sell it. But now, with its help, the man decided to check if the girl had mana and asked her to take the orb in her hands. The aristocrats with black hair and violet eyes are the great family of Lucifalo. The Lucifalo family has produced mages from generation to generation. The man handed the girl a magic orb and told her to hold it tightly and visualize everything accurately. The girl didn't understand how to do it or what magic even was. The man noticed how hard the girl squeezed the ball and reminded her that he asked her to squeeze it not so hard, but to visualize at the same time. But in the end, it didn't work out. When the man thought that maybe the girl didn't even know what magic was, he decided to ask her what color she would like to color the ball. The girl started thinking about what color she would choose, and the first thing she thought of was the family from her dream. So without hesitation, she named the color purple. Then the man told her to represent it as best she could. The man had already lost all hope and thought it was just a drunken delusion. And suddenly, a purple glow really did appear from the magic ball. The man was very happy and thought that this is a real luck, as such a chance falls at once life. The girl was also very surprised that the ball turned purple, just as she wanted. But at the same time, she still did not understand how it happened. The girl assumed that the uncle was so excited because he too liked the new color of the balloon. The man expressed that he did not even suspect that such a treasure would be around, and then jumped into the water. Emotions took over the man, and he even kissed the girl. When he smelled a foul odor from her, he said that she should wash herself. After that he was about to leave, but reminded her that he would be back soon. He also asked the girl not to say anything to anyone when she returned home, and promised to find her real family in the meantime. When the girl returned home, the man told her to clean up as she was emitting a foul odor. But the girl stood her ground, and the man was angry that she ignored him. She ended up going back to her attic. She was very hungry, as she hadn't eaten anything since yesterday, but she knew that staying here would be the right thing to do. So when everyone left, she decided to get out as soon as possible. Suddenly, the same man appeared again. The girl was very much frightened by such an abrupt appearance, and as a result, her plate fell out of her hands. She realized that because of this, there would be bad consequences. But the man kept up and told the girl to stop crying and come out sooner. Eventually, the man dragged the girl outside and explained that he went to the guards, but they didn't believe him. They ended up putting him in jail for allegedly wanting to cheat a nobleman. The girl did not listen to him at all, but only thought that when she returned home, she would definitely be beaten to death. The man informed the girl that he had gone to the girl's real family, as they all had black hair and violet eyes like hers. The girl was surprised to hear the description of those people from the dream. The man wondered what she was doing when he noticed that there were four people drawn in the sand. After three more explanations, the man realized that the Duchess had the same brown hair and brown eyes as the man, and the Duke and twins had black hair and purple eyes as the girl. The man didn't understand how she knew all this, the girl mentally rejoiced that the dream was true. Her heart began to beat fast again. Then, the man offered the girl to go together. The girl was hesitant at first, and finally he held out his hand. The man rejoiced that they were now allies. He promised that the girl's life would now change completely, 
and also called her incredibly lucky. The girl was in the city for the first time and looked around everywhere. She was amazed by the beauty around her. This was the capital of the Davemont Kingdom. The girl had never seen anything like this before. It was a whole new world compared to the slums. The man looked at the girl's clothes and realized that this was not the way to go, as everyone would think that the girl was a beggar if left like this. So he suggested that she go to a place. The woman was washing the girl and did not understand how so much dirt had accumulated on such a small body. The man informed the girl to come out as soon as she was done. The woman wiped the girl dry. Afterward, she no longer looked like a slum beggar. The man now understood why she was not allowed to wash because she was very beautiful. The man assumed that her father knew everything because it was obvious that she was from the aristocracy so he could not sell her to the rich. But by raising her, she would grow up to be a girl who could move out of the slums. The girl thanked the woman, after which they headed onward. The man handed the girl a cape and asked her to put it on. He explained that at first, he thought the men in the gang would steal her, but she went with him without question. If the man had asked for help from the gang, negotiations with Lucifalo would have begun, which would have been very nasty. So little good could come out of it. So the man asked the girl to say something good about him later. But since she could not speak, he told her to try to do it with her hands or at the very least with her feet, and then he called the carriage. The man driving the carriage asked where they were going. The man said they needed to be taken to Duke Lucifalo's place. On the way to the place, the girl and the man fell asleep. And when they arrived at the place, they saw a large number of guards. One of the guards asked why they had come here. The man did not understand why there were so many guards, because yesterday there were only a couple of people. Want immediately asked not to be touched. Then one of the guards ordered everyone to get out of the carriage. As they came out, a man tried to explain that he had come to meet Duke Lucifalo. At, the guard explained that the Duke was not the kind of person you could come to whenever you wanted and asked for proof of identity. The girl was frightened and pressed herself into the man. Then the guard removed the girl's hood in one sharp motion. He immediately announced that he had found Mistress Grazia. The man was surprised that it had happened just like that. The man was surprised that Duke Lucifalo had come out to them in person. The girl realized that this was the man she had seen in the dream. It was Marcel Lucifalo. The girl was sure she had definitely seen him, but he looked much younger now and his gaze much harsher. Then the Duke asked the maid to bring the magic ball. The man explained to the girl that she had seen one before and asked her to do the same as that time. The girl was confused as it was pure chance and she wasn't sure if it would work this time. The man then told the girl to first take the balloon in her hands and then asked him to make it glow purple again. The girl cheered and tried with all her might to make it work. But in the end, the balloon remained blue in color. The Duke was tired of watching this. Suddenly a message said that the Duchess had arrived. She wondered if this was the child. The girl immediately recognized the voice, as it was Duchess Lucifalo named Nia. The girl immediately remembered the woman's words that they would have to meet soon and that they were her true family. The woman had promised in her dream that these people would love her more than anyone else. Just as suddenly, the ball shone with a purple color. Everyone was shocked, but there was no end to the man's joy. The man began to explain that he wouldn't dare lie in front of the Grand Duke. The Duke at this time thought about the fact that the crystal ball reacts only to members of the Lucifalo family. At that time, the Duchess held out her hand to the girl and asked if she wanted to walk with her. The girl drew her hand in response, after which they left the room. When the man was alone with the Duke, he inquired what the man wanted to ask him. When the Duke got tired and said that from this second on, there should not be a single lie, the Duchess asked the girl how old she was now. She said that her daughter Grazia was supposed to turn 10 this year, but the girl looked much younger. The girl immediately remembered her past family fighting over her being with them for a full 10 years. But I was brought out of my musings by the voice of the Duchess. Just like that, the girl showed the number 10 on her fingers. Then the woman noticed another oddity, for the former Duke was tall, and the same could be said of the late Duchess. 
The girl didn't understand who the woman was talking about and how being tall had anything to do with her. Suddenly, the woman started stroking the little girl's head. She explained that the former duke was her father and the older brother of the current duke. The little girl didn't understand how this could be. If the duchess called herself her mom in her dream, she didn't understand what the woman meant. When the duchess asked the girl if she was hungry, but the girl didn't answer anything, then the woman inquired about her name. But the problem was that no one had ever called her by her name. The woman explained that if the girl didn't want to talk, there was nothing wrong with that. But the girl shook her head, a sign that it wasn't like that at all. Then the duchess realized that the girl had been living without a name until now. She was shocked by this. Only now did the duchess notice that she hadn't heard the girl say a word. When the duchess asked the man who had brought the girl in why she wasn't speaking, but the man just didn't know how he could tell the girl about her past family. Not demanding that the man tell her the whole truth, she wanted to know what had happened to the girl. The man explained that she used to talk, but at one point she stopped that it was possible that where she lived, she was being mistreated. The girl was sitting in a separate room, and she was very curious about what she and her uncle were talking about, and what awaited her now. Suddenly, the butler came to the girl and informed her that they had not seen each other for a long time, calling the girl by the name of Grazia. The girl was frightened by this abrupt appearance. The butler immediately apologized and explained that he did not mean to scare her. The man introduced himself by the name Geladin, explaining that he was Lucifilo's butler. The man realized that things were different for the girl here now. He promised that from now on, no one would even dare touch her. Rare admitted that, to be honest, he recognized the girl at first sight when she was just a baby. The man assumed that the girl was still very young, so she wouldn't understand everything. But he said that a week ago, a masked woman came to the mansion. A cloaked and masked woman appeared near the Duke's mansion. The guards immediately asked who she was, but there was no answer. Replacing this girl held out a pouch. Although the girl is suspicious, but the guard did not feel threatened by her. And in the pouch was a letter that said a man would appear in a week with Grazia. And there was also the previous chief's pendant. Butler admitted that he now knew what he had stayed alive for, and how after the death of the master and the loss of the girl, no one would have thought she would even come back alive. Butler still remembered the day the Duke passed away. There had been a search in the forest, and then the palace had been informed that the Duke had been found. Well, by then, he had already passed away. That night, the Duke was out for a walk with his newborn daughter. Eventually, the Duke passed away and Grazia disappeared. The Butler assumed that it was still difficult for the girl to accept the story about the former Duke, so he decided to end on those words. He was glad that she was back, and also said that he would prepare some light snacks for her. The girl drooled at the abundance of food, as she had had to starve before. The girl was greeted by a maid named Rosa. She explained that she didn't know what the girl would like, so she brought a little bit of everything. The woman also added that their pastry chefs were the best in the world, so she could not worry about the taste. The butler also added that the girl could gobble whatever she wanted, only advised her to take her time. After that, the girl began to nominate the brownie. The butler assumed that the girl had missed a meal. Then the girl showed the number two on her fingers. The butler assumed that she had missed two whole meals. But after a few seconds, he realized that the girl had not eaten for two whole days. Then the maid said she would bring tea for the girl. Suddenly, another girl burst into the room with her brother. The girl noticed that she had black hair and violet eyes. They were the Lucifilo twins, whose names were Darzan and Diana. The girl realized they were the children from her dream. She remembered the woman's words that the day would come when her brother and sister would love her more than anyone else. Just as suddenly, the girl started screaming that if she has black hair and purple eyes, I am from the Lucifilo family then the butler approached the girl. Diana inquired if the girl was the child of a concubine. Diana was afraid that her daddy had cheated on her mom. As the butler suddenly raised his voice at Diana, the girl was taken aback by such treatment. The butler explained to the girl that it was wrong to speak so badly about others and the truth. The girl tried to explain that the knights were gathered outside and mommy and daddy were so angry 
so she thought they had a fight. The butler said he had never been so disappointed with Diana as he was today. The girl didn't understand how Paladin could say such a thing and began to cry. Then her emotions turned to anger at the girl, as she thought that she was the reason the butler had yelled at her. Diana informed the girl that she was their enemy from that day forward. Her brother backed up and saw the girl get out of the mansion. Afterward, the children left. The Duke inquired of the butler how the child was. The butler remarked that the Duke was very careful, as he realized that as soon as the Duke called her by name, Grazia would officially become Princess Lucifilo. The butler added that the girl was sleeping in the guest room, and also said that he had sorted out the meals and other basic details. The man suggested that a professional should be called in, since the girl has a mental problem. Duke asked the butler what he thought. The man suggested that Duke wanted to know if the butler was sure it was really Grazia. The butler remarked that the girl looked a lot like the former Duke, and he was sure it was Grazia. Even though she's small for her years, she's still growing up and she'll be fine. After that, the Duke handed the butler a paper. He also added that all the slums had been searched and found her former family. As a result, everyone caught is locked in the dungeon. The butler said that if the contents of the report were to be believed, if the girl was indeed subjected to such a thing, she was still in good condition. The Duke wondered why, but the butler explained that outwardly she was not rejecting the people around her, her people, and excessive surprise and anxiety, even to small things was completely normal. The man explained that with such bullying, usually people can't even make eye contact with others. The girl's former family tried to prove that they had never done anything like this and that they had raised her well in the slums. They kneeled in front of the Duke. He then held out and on the pendant and asked if they had seen it before. The Duke told the butler that when he showed his brother's pendant, they hesitated, but said they knew nothing. The butler suggested that they might have recognized it after all. The Duke told him that they had two other sons and also added that when questioned, one of the sons said that until recently, it had been his father's. Whereupon all the evidence was verified and the identity of Grazia was confirmed. But the Duke was very curious as to who was the woman who had brought the pendant. So the butler suggested a trip to the temple. The Duke remarked that it was a good idea. He also asked the butler what he was going to do. The man indicated that he would like some help from the other butler. The Duke explained that he couldn't let him go, though he supported his desire to be near Grazia. The Duke said that if the girl needed anything, the butler should let him know right away. The butler noticed that something was amiss with the Duke and inquired if he was all right. The man explained that it had been 10 years since he had started searching for his brother's killer and he had thought his niece was dead. She had been abused all that time, so she might be okay. The Duke left and told the butler to take care of the child. The girl woke up on a soft bed and only now did she realize that she hadn't even noticed she had fallen asleep. She began to remember everything that had happened yesterday. Remembering Diana, she realized that she had been really disappointed. But the same Diana in her dream told the girl to wait a little longer, for the day would come when her brother and sister would love her more than anyone else. The girl decided that she would obediently wait for it because that was the way it had always been. As suddenly someone wished good morning, the girl was surprised. It was the butler. He remarked that the girl liked the blanket very much. After that, the man invited several maids to enter. Maid Rose said that first she would teach the girl to wash. After that, she poured water into a plate and offered the girl to dip her hands. The girl was surprised that the water was warm as she expected it to be cold, like in a stream. Next, Rosa suggested that the girl use the soap. The girl didn't understand how soap could be so beautiful and fragrant, as before she had only used soap that was black and smelly. So no matter how hard she worked to wash her clothes, they still smelled unpleasant. The girl didn't notice how engrossed she got, whereupon Rosa informed her that she could stop there. The maid was glad that she enjoyed it. He also added that the girl would have to learn a lot about Lucifilo's life. The girls handed over a gift of a drawing album and pencils. The butler asked the girl that if she needed anything, she should just draw it and give it to him. 
The man inquired if the lesson with Maid Rose had already passed. The girl began to recall how the maid had taught her not to put soap on the dinner table and to hold the fork with her left hand and the knife with her right. The woman also told the girl to never pick up anything that fell. The butler remarked that the girl was having fun. The man informed that he and the lady would be going to the temple after some time. The girl had heard very little about the temple and had never been there herself. The only thing she knew was that the temple was a beautiful place to which she thought an angel might descend at any moment. The girl couldn't believe she was going there. Mentally, the butler supported the girl as she would have to find out everything after her trip to the temple and wished her to be patient. The doctor informed the duchess that the girl has problems with malnutrition and stunting, but overall her health is fine, but it is not her physical condition that concerns him. The doctor remarked that Grazia felt safe for now, but there was no telling what would happen if a trigger appeared. The girl didn't understand what he meant. The doctor then gave the example that if it happened that she was exposed to violence again, they couldn't even predict how she would react in such a case. The woman was in agreement that the reaction of people who have something to lose and those who have nothing to lose is very different. Therefore, the doctor advised to eliminate all worries as the girl should not even think about the fact that she could be beaten or scolded again. The man asked the woman to show the girl that she was henceforth living in safety and love. He warned that if she gets the thought of being alone, then she might even become obsessed. The woman admitted that she wasn't sure if she could. Vita raising each of the children as individuals is already a difficult task, but it is even harder if the child has a mental wound. The Duchess put some nice new clothes on the girl. She was content to leave Diana's old clothes behind. The girl realized that she had never worn such beautiful clothes before. She even felt a little embarrassed about it. The Duchess informed the girl that the Duke was busy today, so the two of them would go to the temple then headed to the carriage. The woman asked the girl to give her one hand and hold her skirt with the other, after which the girl climbed into the carriage. The woman inquired if Grazia would like to sit next to her. The woman informed the girl that while they were on their way to the temple, she would tell her a few things. First of all, the woman decided to start with the purpose of their trip. The Duchess explained that at the temple, they must confirm a direct lineage to the Imperial family or to Lucifalo. The reason being that the imperial family of Davemont and the Lucifalo bloodline have divine power. A long time ago, the Davemont they live in was not an empire, it was a kingdom, and Nason Davemont was the king at that time. There was also an Archimagus Mir Lucifalo who changed the entire system of magic. They ended up getting married and had two children. After that, the first one inherited the title of prince and became the king of Davemont and the second one became the head of the Lucifalo family. King Nason and Queen Mir then received a blessing and divine power other than magic. Since then, this has flowed strongly in the ancestors of the Emperor and Lucifalo families. In every generation, there is someone who can utilize the granted power. Therefore, the Duchess wanted to see if the girl had that very power. The woman continued with the story about their family but then realized that it was all too difficult for the girl to remember so far. So she said that as soon as they received confirmation, she would become a member of Lucifalo, and then no one would dare to consider her a child from the slums, because she would be a princess from the great noble family. The girl was shocked that she would become an aristocrat. It was impossible for her to believe it, since before she didn't even dare to raise her eyes to an aristocrat, and now she herself would be one of them. Just as suddenly, out of nowhere, Diana and her brother came out. They said they were against it. The Duchess asked the children how they got here in the first place. Find explained that it didn't matter now, as they couldn't allow the girl to become part of Lucifalo. The girl explained that she knew this would happen, so she hid here. She noticed that her mom was too kind to this girl. When the Duchess asked if they remembered that they were turning 12 this year, the children replied that they remembered but didn't understand how the girl was supposed to be a member of their family. Diana informed them that she would not recognize her for anything. The Duchess realized that it was her fault, as she had not explained anything to the children. The woman said that she would have told them everything later anyway. The Duchess pointed to the child and explained that she would now be a member of their family, 
but she was not her own daughter. The children immediately began to think that their father had cheated, but the woman began to deny everything and tried to explain that this was not the case. The Duchess added that this child is the child of their dad's older brother, meaning she is the daughter of the former head of the family. The children were shocked that the girl is her cousin. The woman and the girl were greeted by Raffle. He was a novice of the Archbishop. The woman indicated that she too was pleased to meet him and introduced herself by the name Nia. The man noted that they had traveled a long way and asked the princess how she was feeling. The woman explained that they had a small problem and also asked where the Archbishop himself was. The man motioned for them to follow him as they were expected. The Archbishop's attendant notified them that Duchess Lucifalo had already arrived, whereupon they were told to pass. The Archbishop noted that it had been a long time since he had seen the Duchess. The woman greeted the Archbishop. The man offered a seat and also informed them that tea had already been prepared. The Duchess pointed to the girl and explained that her name was Grazia. The woman explained that she would like to test her divine power. But the Archbishop said that just by looking at her, he could tell that she was a princess of the Lucifalo family. The woman agreed that they did look alike. The Archbishop said that he could feel her energy and added that members of the Lucifalo family had always had a unique aura. The woman admitted that as far as she knew, the former Duke had brought Grazia to the temple 10 years ago already. The woman asked if the Archbishop had confirmed her divine power then. The man said that unfortunately, he wasn't Archbishop then, so he couldn't say. He assumed that the past Archbishop was doing the verification. The woman assumed that he was talking about the current Pope. The Archbishop confirmed what the Duchess said and added that he had already contacted him and told him about the situation. The Archbishop conveyed that the Pope regretted not being able to come in person. On the Duchess understood because the Pope is the person who should remain neutral. After that, the woman offered to test the girl's divine power. The Archbishop asked the girl's hand. The girl was afraid because she expected to be beaten. But still, the kind voice of the Duchess assured the girl that everything would be all right, and she stretched out her hand to the Archbishop, whereupon he began to recite a prayer. Suddenly, a bright light poured out of the girl's little hand. All those present were shocked. They were convinced that Grazia was a direct heir of divine power. The Archbishop suggested that the Duke would be concerned about this. The Duchess wondered if the power had already begun to manifest, but the Archbishop could not say anything yet. The man recalled that the twins had a weak spiritual resonance, but the princess's body was literally enveloped in divine power. Diana looked at Grazia and didn't understand why she was crying again. But the girl remembered that in the dream, this woman called herself her mother, but she also said that Grazia was not her daughter. The girl was confused, but now it all made sense to her. In the dream, the Duchess told her that she would love her, but the girl was worried that she would be alone again, and that was very scary. Those who are able to use divine power, one born into the Emperor's family, or Lucifalo. If the Imperial family found out about Grazia, they would surely put her to the test. The Duchess was worried about this, as suddenly, Diana asked her mother if she was sick. The woman explained that she was just thinking hard. She wondered if the former Duke knew about Grazia's power. The woman suggested that if he did, then perhaps it had something to do with his death. The woman noticed that the girl didn't look well. Just as suddenly, the carriage window shattered. It was done with a knife. The guards realized it was an attack and told them to send for help and to report everything to the Duke. The woman hoped that until the paladins arrived, the knights should be able to hold out. The Duchess called the girl to her, but Grazia was in complete shock and didn't understand what was happening. Memories from her past family, where she had been brutally abused, came flooding back to the girl. As the woman suddenly hugged the girl tightly, she asked as Grazia looked at her and slowly inhaled. The woman told the girl that no matter how scary it was, she could overcome it and also promised that the Knights of Lucifalo would protect them. She then reminded her to take a slow inhale and exhale again. Just as suddenly, a guard appeared and told them to leave the carriage immediately. But the woman thought it was more dangerous outside as suddenly there was a huge explosion. 
and the whole carriage began to blaze. The woman, looking at it, thought that one more second, and she and the children would have turned into ashes. The children were terrified too. The guards told the royal family to run away quickly. The woman told Diana and her brother to take Grazia's hand and run as fast as they could. The children tried to change the woman's mind as they could use magic and could help. They really wanted to protect their mom. Then the woman turned to Grazia and said that she wished they had more time. Just as suddenly, the woman saw in the reflection of the child's eyes that another fireball was coming, followed by another explosion. The Duchess lay on the ground and covered the children. Suddenly the woman noticed that Grazia was nowhere to be found. But then her attention was drawn to the man who was the instigator of all this chaos. The woman realized that he was a magician. She decided that she needed to escape as quickly as possible. But she wouldn't be able to do it herself, so she told Grazia to run away immediately, as she realized that it was most likely they had come for her. And for blood, the woman could see very poorly. The children stood up for the Duchess. They decided to show the villain that they too had magic. The woman was afraid that the villains knew of Grazia's power. The man stepped on Grazia with his foot, and in doing so, began to conjure. He decided to deal with the Duchess first. The woman was very worried about the children and told them to run away quickly from here. But the children wouldn't budge, as they were going to leave their mom and decided they could help. After that, they began to conjure a magic shield, but the woman realized that it would not be enough. At this time, the villain had already conjured a magic spear. He apologized and explained that he did not need the Duchess and the twins. Then, the children realized that they needed to conjure more. The girl looked at the Duchess, who was exhausted and desperate, whereupon a glow erupted and the girl became a grown-up girl in an instant. She realized that the day had come. Just as suddenly, Grazia woke up. Diana was sitting in front of her, explaining what she had written, what she would tell her tomorrow. Diana explained that the girl's power in the given future took her back 10 years. But since both of them can't exist in the same time, so the little girl is her in the future. Diana realized that there were only a few minutes left, so she decided to give the girl the advice to never talk about what she saw in the future. The girl also added that when the past changes, the future becomes distorted, then the girl's body has to deal with cause and effect. It then came to Grazia's attention that she was in the future 10 years from now. Diana added that if she was told anything, nothing would change, so she shouldn't say anything to anyone. Just as suddenly, the Duchess and the butler burst into the room. The woman told the girl to be careful, after which she hugged the girl. The woman confessed that there was a lot she wished the 10-year-old would have said to her. The Duchess admitted that she was sorry that she didn't know how the girl felt. The woman really wanted to apologize to her for that. The woman explained that she just didn't know the girl very well yet and needed to learn how to be a mom herself. The Duchess also added that the girl's name is now Grazia. The Duchess referred to herself as her mom, who loves her youngest daughter very much. The girl was surprised that there was only one mage here, since her daddy was supposed to tell her today. The bandit asked the girl who she was and where that girl had gone. He didn't understand what was going on and also warned the girl to save herself for starters before blabbing. The girl began to cast spells, after which the bandit's magic began to disappear. The brigand also lost his sight. He did not understand why this was happening because he had a protective artifact. Then the bandit decided to kill the girl, thinking that this way he would be able to see again, but he missed every time. The girl noticed that the brigand had engraved magic on his bracelet. He then got up to swing his sword at the girl again, but she deftly dodged each blow. Eventually, the girl was able to cut his mana circle and advise the brigand to think twice. By this point, Lucifalo's paladins had already arrived. The girl beckoned them over, after which they were able to catch the brigand and put shackles on him. The girl looked at her brother and sister when they were 12 years old each. The girl hugged them tightly. She said that they were the coolest in the whole world, and also, even though they were scared a lot, but bravely protected their mom. After that, the girl noticed her mom, hugged her tightly, and asked her to keep herself safe, and also promised to always protect her. The girl gave them first aid, but advised them not to overdo it. 
The woman thanked Grazia. She explained that her power was to go back 10 years. The girl explained that things would soon go back to normal, and small as she was now, she would be in 10 years, so Grazia told the Duchess not to worry, for she would never lose. It was explained to the Duke that they might have been attacked because the Archbishop had spoken of the girl's divine power, and the problem was not only that those words had leaked out of the temple, but also how quickly they had had time to prepare for the attack. At least the brigands knew everything then a few days, or even ten years in advance. The Duke suggested that most likely as his brother had taken Grazia to the temple ten years ago, and apparently had her divine power confirmed there, then the perpetrator of the attack was someone from the Archbishop's office. One of the men at the table suggested that the culprit wanted to win the holder of the power over to his side, thus gaining power. Someone who knew of the former Duke's affairs, and someone who could prepare the attack in advance, and someone who could bribe the Pope, who was still an Archbishop, to fill in information about Grazia, and someone who needs the holder of the power more than anyone else. And the princes are the only ones who fit that role. Then the Duke ordered that the first thing to do is to have the Knight Commander along with Galadin to check if there are any spies in Lucifalo. The Knight promised that it would be done. The Duke realized that it was dangerous to press charges without any evidence, so he decided that he needed to pick the most dangerous suspects and keep an eye on them. Then the man asked what they had learned about the attackers in the interrogation. The Duke was annoyed that, as expected, nothing had come out. He remembered that man from the slums who also said nothing, but explained himself by saying that he had merely seen the corpse of the aristocrats in the mountains. One of the people present said that there were currently three princesses and six princes in the imperial family of Davemont. The man also added that the power struggle was fierce, and whether anyone else would emerge with power, no one knew. The Duke was worried about this child. Even though Grazia was 20 years old, the fact that she didn't hesitate to cut the hand of the enemy without hesitation showed that she had fought countless times. The Duke hoped that her brother's child would now live a peaceful life but realized that she was once again facing many more hardships. At this time, little Grazia was learning to talk. The butler explained to the girl that it was important not only to use her vocal cords, but also to position her tongue correctly. He advised to move her lips as well. Eventually the girl was able to say one word and the butler praised her. The man decided that today was enough practice. He added that he wanted to tell the girl something important namely the story of Lucifalo and the imperial family. The butler said that the former duke, Grazia's father, being a descendant of an archmage, had outstanding magical abilities. And already at the age of 30, he became the youngest leader of the imperial mage knights. Although it's a secret, Duke Marcel doesn't like to work hard. And since he can't get into politics or running a business or anything else, he wants to live a peaceful life with his beloved family. The butler explained that it's because Lucifalo is different from other aristocrat families. Although they have the same blood flowing as the imperial family, but also do not have divine power, so they cannot have power. The girl knew it was because the princes could start hunting. The butler noted that the girl was incredibly intelligent. The man also added that besides everything, Lucifalo is on the side of the imperial family, and even if the entire aristocracy of the empire is against the decision, Lucifalo will always support the imperial family. The girl didn't understand which one was the emperor's or the prince. The butler explained that the princes are members of the imperial family. So, partly they need support. But when there is a disagreement in the imperial family, the emperor has the last word. The butler explained that if the issue is decided without the emperor's involvement, the Lucifalos don't have to support anyone. Thanks to that, the Lucifalos were not interfering in the princess's fight right now. Just as suddenly, they were interrupted by a maid. The butler asked Rosa what was wrong. The woman said that all the direct descendants of Lucifalo should arrive at His Majesty, the Emperor's palace. The butler was surprised by this news. The Duke explained to the girl that she was forbidden to talk about the future, because every deed has a price. In the past, all holders of divine power paid their blow with the price of their body. Those who used the power most often lost, or even an arm. 
The girl was shocked at this information. Duke explained that the girl could even pay with her life if she decided to stop their world for one day, for example. The man explained that it was still a small price to pay compared to the power she had. The girl thought about the fact that she could save someone dear to her with just the price of her hand. The Duke spoke out that if that was the case, even the Imperial family wouldn't be able to do anything about it. If the girl through the years could come now and tell everything, the prince's interest would quickly wane. But the man decided that they needed to prepare for an audience with his majesty. He was satisfied that all the family members would come together, and in their eyes the girl would be less dangerous, then kept to the Priscilla of Grace to go and prepare. The girl started and curtsied wherewithal, much surprised by this. The girl was being packed for a trip to an audience. The Duchess noticed that the cape and cape turned the girl into a doll. Grazia really wanted to be like her little sister, because she had the same hair color as her and eye color. Nia said that at the palace, the girl would be able to see not only His Majesty the Emperor, but many other nobles as well. The Empress, the Queen, the Prince, and even princesses would be there. But if the girl was completely scared, she could always hide behind the Duchess. When they approached the carriage, Diana once again she said that she hated the girl and warned her not to think that since she had come to the mansion so suddenly, she could make everyone fall in love with her at once. The Duchess couldn't stand it and told Diana to shut up. The woman warned that if her daughter spoke bad words to Grazia, she would not tolerate it. When the carriage was already approaching the Imperial Palace, the Duke turned to the girl and warned that His Majesty could ask and show her his power. The Duke asked if she could do it in such a case. The girl replied that she could. When they entered the Imperial Palace, the girl was amazed at the luxury and beauty all around. Duke Marcel greeted His Majesty the Emperor. It was Barandion Davamont. The Emperor inquired if this child was indeed Grazia Lucifalo, whereupon the girl was asked to come closer. The Emperor asked the girl to tell about her power. The girl was silent for a long time because she was scared. The Emperor laughed at this, and then he asked the Duke to tell it himself. The girl felt very stupid as she said she could do anything. She thought it would be better if she was here from the future. The girl, I realized, wanted to be strong so she herself could protect the Duke, Duchess, sister, or brother. She wanted to protect everyone. As suddenly, a bright golden color spilled from the girl again. As a result, a confident girl appeared instead of the shy girl. She explained that she was the youngest mage knight of His Majesty Emperor's empire. When the girl came to her senses, it was explained to her that she had moved 10 years again. The emperor then asked the girl if she wanted an old man to teach her how to play chess. The emperor realized that her power was to transport herself 10 years. The emperor decided to ask the girl, since she was a mage knight, under what command? After all, the future of such a dedicated and promising person is truly God's power. Princess Grazia seemed to flee in embarrassment. Then he decided to ask the girl what her power was. She told him that her divine power is to change places after 10 years, and the main thing is to use the ability to protect people dear to her by resetting her in time from the present and future. The emperor then inquired about the fee for the divine power. The girl replied that she had none. However, before she revealed anything from the future, if she did go back to the past and talk about the future, the past would definitely be distorted in one form or another. The girl explained that it was causal, soon to return to her at the cost of physical pain. The emperor realized that this, that pain, was a small price to pay. The girl also added that it never knows the price, before it hid unnecessary, significant details that had little effect on the future. And if it feels physical pain even for such insignificant things, there is no telling what would happen otherwise. The emperor realized that the girl had revealed that she was a mage knight and assumed that this was the disclosure of the future. The girl did not deny it. She explained that it was the unveiling of a secret. But if it's an unchangeable part of the future, it's fine. The girl was sure that even if she told it, nothing would change. Then the girl wanted to say something else. She warned that she would beat his majesty in chess sooner or later and advised the emperor to take care to have a backup plan. The old emperor asked the grace if she knew what the most important thing in chess was. The man explained that the most important thing in chess is manners. The emperor, 
who is at the top of the empire and has defeated all intrigue and slander, values manners. That is why he plays only with those who are respected. But the girl was an exception, because the emperor did not just respect her, but was immensely grateful to her. The girl realized that the man was talking about the future. Then the emperor asked if the girl knew what was next in importance. He explained that it was calculating the moves and the endless struggle with them. For in chess, as in life, he who sees more and farther wins. Afterwards, he handed the girl a queen piece. He explained that this piece can, unlike others, move in all directions, so it is the strongest on the board. The man warned that it should be treated with caution, as it was very important. The emperor wanted Grazia to be his strongest piece that could move in any direction. The emperor realized that right now, she knew she had nothing but family. But sooner or later, she would have a purpose that would fill her life. Deep down, the emperor wants to help her, but he can't. After all, what would have happened if the girl had known about him beforehand? The emperor has expressed that he could not have imagined that the little child would ever become his friend. The duchess suggested that if she and his majesty were playing chess, then their relationship was closer than that of servant and emperor, which means that in 10 years, Grazia and his majesty will be close enough to give advice and comments. This even made the emperor's mood improve. Then Grazia turned to the duke, calling him Papa. She had something to say to him. The girl warned that he would need Lucifalo's power someday. If so, the girl hoped he would side with his youngest daughter. The duke immediately thought of what his brother would say if he were alive. He remembered his brother as a very kind man and assumed that he would fully support his daughter for that was the kind of man he was. Promised the girl he would do so, if her brother couldn't, he would be a substitute for her. He would simply be family to Grazia. The man was approached by his mother. It was Beoxian Davemont, who was the first prince. The woman asked him what he thought. It was Empress Rasha. The young man realized that she was talking about a power holder, but he didn't understand what his mother meant by that. The woman was angry that her son never understood her, then she explained that the girl was to be his date and explained that they weren't the kind of people who just wasted words on others. Plus, he knew that it was forbidden in the Lucifalo family to marry into the imperial family. But the woman wasn't talking about marrying. She was referring to other accidents. After all, even if her power was useless now, there was no harm in keeping her by his side. The young man knew they were 15 years apart. The woman explained that since he had inherited the emperor's blood and hers, he would be able to control the child. The young man promised that he would try, whereupon his mother beckoned him closer. The empress explained that you can't release something that can add to your strength, also ordered that he dare not disappoint his mother. One of the men said that Lady Empress Rasha is definitely targeting the power holder, and it doesn't matter to her whether the girl is useless or not. All that matters is that she is already coveted by the Empress. Queen Ariana Davemont was very angry when she heard this. After all, she knew that the Empress never releases what she wants. The Queen knew that the Empress was a woman who did not hide her ambitions even before she was married. The woman realized that it was her fault for missing out on the first prince's seat. The girl then tried to reassure her mother that even if her brother wasn't born with golden eyes, there was still plenty of opportunity. The girl assumed that if the empress was defeated, the first prince's position would also change. It was the third princess, Erin Davemont. The queen knew very well that the empress wasn't just lucky, but also an enemy, since she had never once given them even a chance. The girl explained that if there was no loophole, it was enough to induce her to make that very loophole. She suggested using a wielder of divine power. Since the empress was targeting after the girl, it was better to get rid of the problem. Even though there was talk of the girl's uselessness to the empress, it didn't matter. The queen explained to her daughter that Lucifalo's family had recently been attacked, so they had definitely stepped up security. The girl then suggested making it so that the empress couldn't take advantage of her. That's when the queen became interested. The girl asked if it was impossible to make the girl an enemy for the empress. The queen realized that the girl wanted to use Empress Misha. Even though she gave birth to a prince, they are not interested in power, but the fact that she is also the Empress, and because she is from the Grantis family, she is one of the figures that cannot be ignored in the struggle for the throne.
The girl explained that there are still many ways, since Grazia is still small, so one can take their time. Just as suddenly, the woman expressed to her son that he was useless from start to finish. The woman also added that if he wasn't born a prince, she would have kicked him out long ago. The maid looked for Grace everywhere. The girl was worried as the girl wanted to go for a walk with her together, but she had gone somewhere. It was Grazia's personal maid, named Tasha. Because of the large number of lessons, Grazia hardly ever rested, but she still didn't overdo it. At this time, the girl's scarf had rolled onto the frozen pond and she wanted to retrieve it. She tried to assure herself that there was nothing wrong with it, since it wasn't lying very far away. It was a scarf from her mom. This was the second time she had lost it if the wind blew unexpectedly. The girl had almost reached it, she thought. The lake had frozen well. As suddenly a maid noticed her, she told the girl not to move as she was about to help her. But Grazia didn't know what to do, as there was only a little distance left to get the scarf. But the girl ended up falling under the ice. She was terribly cold. The wind had knocked her down, and now she was drowning. But deep down, the girl believed that the night maids would save her. Grazia awoke to loud talking. The knight explained to the mistress that the girl was completely still. He explained that everyone has an instinct for self-preservation, but the girl didn't even move. The duchess didn't understand what he meant by that. Then the knight explained that migration has no desire to live, and there that for giving birth to attachment to others does not add to her desire to live. The guard informed the duchess that the girl should know that she has mental problems. The man also added that there was another problem, as Miss Grazia had fallen into the lake due to wind magic. The duchess realized that someone was targeting her girl. The guard explained that it was Miss Diana. Hearing this shocked the duchess so much that she even had to sit down. The maids ran to the girl. The maid said that although she was a servant in the Lucifalo family, she was also Miss Grazia's personal maid. Although Grazia told the girl to keep quiet, she can't do that now. Hersini asked the girl not to be silent. The maid explained that things that are dear to Miss Grazia are constantly disappearing, even the soap from the bathroom, and right in walks, she often falls and injures herself. The maid admitted that she thought it was strange, but she did not feel mania, but assumed that the migration knew everything. The maid apologized in tears to the Duchess for not telling her about it sooner. The girl woke up and thought everyone was fighting over her. Suddenly, the adult Diana came to her. The girl did not notice how she was transported to the future. Diana looked at the girl and said that every time she saw her, she couldn't hold back her tears. The girl assumed it was because she had been wronged a lot, but she couldn't apologize to her, being the adult version of herself. So she decided that she should be grateful that she could meet little Grazia. Then the girl began to wipe away her sister's tears. The adult Diana admitted that she was actually very scared when they were attacked. It was the first time she had ever seen someone die. She was afraid that her mom might die too. And she was scared to death because she almost died too. And foolishly, she thought it was the girl's fault. She had also listened to the conversation between Papa and the Knights when they told her what these men were looking for from her, where she now realized that Grazia was not to blame for anything. She was angry with herself for finding out so late. But the girl was glad that Diana loved her now and hugged the girl. At this time, the grown-up Grazia came to see little Diana. The girl explained that her powers were unstable now, so she would appear unexpectedly. The girl allowed herself to sit down, but Diana was still very angry and asked the girl to go as she hated her. But Grazia said that she loved Diana. Grazia explained that her sister was a strong person because she had taken a risk to protect her mom back then. The girl noted that it was cool when the girl tried to be brave, even when it was already over. Grazia didn't care if Diana hated her now. The main thing was not to start regretting it later. The girl promised that she would be back soon, but Diana told her not to come. Grazia agreed, but before she left, she said that if Diana wanted to see her, she would come, if only for a moment. When the doors closed, Diana's room shone with a bright light, the girl was mesmerized by such beauty. At this time, the Duchess complained that she couldn't recognize their children. She couldn't believe that Diana had used magic with the intention of putting someone in danger. 
But the Duke explained that Diana didn't use magic to hurt Grazia. She just wanted the scarf to fly away, but the wind caused Grazia to fall into the lake. The woman worried that Diana didn't realize what she had done. The Duchess told me that when she called them to talk, it was as if Diana wasn't worried at all. The girl told her about the whole grace abuse thing, and she'd encouraged her brother Darzan to do it too. The Duchess was afraid to scold them, as it might make the situation worse. But she knew that it just couldn't go on like this. The Duke promised his wife to talk to the children about it. Just as suddenly, a now grown-up Grazia appeared in the room. The girl happily ran up to hug her mother and explained that she had some time left, so she had come to see her. The Duke assumed it was a sudden display of power again. Grazia explained that it happens because the force is unstable. Grazia remarked that in her time with Diana, she and Diana get along just fine. Fighting, I thought about how her sister Diana is very cool and strong. The girl couldn't talk about the future, so she just asked to believe. Grazia knew what her mother wanted to say, but the girl understood that Diana was just very scared as a child, as she saw death for the first time, so she was afraid for her mother. The Duchess thought that hating Grazia had been the wrong choice. The woman assumed that Graziana was scared, then she should be too. But the girl explained that she wasn't afraid of death, as many people died of starvation or disease in the slums. But there were many people at the lake who could save her, and she didn't think she could die. Diana was still very scared, so Grazia asked her mom to hug her. After all, despite everything, she is still the truest child. The girl moved away from her mother and informed her that her time was over. The girl promised to see her next time and said goodbye to her family. Later, the Duchess decided to go into her daughter Diana's room and saw her playing with the magic left behind after visiting the adult Grazia. Diana explained that she just wanted to try something out. The mother then suggested that the girl sleep together. She explained that if she slept next to her, the night would stop being so scary. The girl agreed, and then the Duchess asked the girl if she wanted to tell her what was scaring her because her mother would listen to everything. The butler informed her that if anyone from the Lucifalo family wanted to study magic, they had to get permission from the emperor. The duke thought it was a rather unreasonable rule, but he was only patient for Miss Grazia's sake. But after that incident, he changed his opinion because the forces of migration are unstable, and now the girl needs magic more than anyone. But the girl didn't understand what the butler was talking about at all. Then the maid asked the butler if he himself would teach magic to Miss Grazia. The man explained that it was important to him, but he didn't know how to teach Miss Grazia if he didn't know how to use magic himself. The butler explained that if the mind was weak, the body must be strong, and even if the migration hated the world, it would be okay as long as she didn't get hurt. But it was hard for the maid to imagine that her miss would be hated by the world and she didn't think that the girl would use dangerous magic. Still, it was a crime to learn magic without the knowledge of the imperial family. Then the butler suggested that Miss Grazia could start learning magic on her own, because she has such outstanding data that it would be easy. The butler said that fortunately, in his family, even though he had no mana, everyone was taught the basic knowledge of magic, even though they had no mana. The man set his sights on raising a brilliant wizard and handed the girl a book of magic instruction. The butler told her that there are three ways to use magic. The first is the method that people most often use, namely the method of using imagination. Butler explained that if one needs to heal a person, one must visualize that healing and with words direct the mana as a wish. The second method of using magic by the consequence of an action, for example, snapping one's fingers, thus allowing one to use the magic of movement. The man explained that, however, this method cannot be used by ordinary wizards, as one must reach a certain level where one can use imagination magic in reality without saying anything specific. The man explained that one must clearly realize the place where one needs to move to, and at the same time, move the whole body at once. When using magic, you need to move without any damage, and also make everything smooth. Butler explained that it was because of these difficulties that few people used this type of magic. And the last was the method of drawing magic circles that could process mana. The butler explained that before Archmage Mi'ar Lucifalo restructured the magic system, 
everyone used certain patterns of magic circles. But after her innovation, it didn't matter what pattern was used. The main thing became how the mage imagines the action in a certain pattern. Thus, if one drew a dog while summoning mana, that would be magic. Butler added that this can be circumvented if you engrave an outline of mana on the circle, in which case the other person can easily use the magic circle as well. However, very few people are able to do this, which is why there aren't many high-level tools. When the girl raised her hand and asked how people who don't have mana use magic tools, since her maid Tasha doesn't have a magic lamp, the butler was shocked by the girl's intelligence and was immensely proud of her. He explained that if one didn't have their own mana, they could use an engraved magic circle that absorbed mana from nature. So in their day, this kind of magic was used by people who were low on mana. The butler decided that today, their practice would start with the basics and suggested that the girl go somewhere else. Eventually, when they got outside, the butler informed them that this place was perfect for them. The butler informed the girl that Miss Grazia was afraid of insects and using magic from now on. The girl replied that she was not afraid of insects. The butler then explained to her that she was using magic because the maid was very afraid of a bug. The butler was very excited that this was the first time Miss Grazia was using magic for a scared maid. The butler explained that mom is like air. She moves in everything in the world, people, organic matter, natural phenomena, and so on. The man added that people born with more mana have a harder time feeling it. He explained that it was a matter of the girl having to realize now this part of her body that had been with her since birth. He realized that it sounded no doubt difficult, but asked the girl to try to focus on feeling the mana. The girl took a deep breath and it felt like something was tickling her. The butler then began to guide the girl and advised her to think about how she was going to use this magic. He explained that if the girl wanted to catch a bug, it would be a good idea to use a fireball. He realized that it might not work the first time, but he asked the girl to give it a try. He told her to visualize it and put it into words. The girl concentrated on thinking of the fireball, but also immediately remembered the day they were attacked. That had been the impetus for the magic. The butlers and maids were amazed at the girl's results, as the fire was very bright and large. But when the girl opened her eyes, she saw that a large section of land and garden had been damaged. The Duke was not very pleased when he heard about this. He asked the butler if he had really taught the girl magic. The butler immediately began apologizing to the Duke. The man explained that a large fire had broken out in the house of nobles close to the emperor, and it was only a matter of time before it reached the imperial family. The Duke realized that the only thing to worry about was an aggressive display of abilities. He explained that it had to be about more than just Grazia's mental problems as well as adding that she would be called to attention again because of her strong magic. Therefore, he decided to make it so. He said that today's plaything is a genius. If anyone asks how they found out, the butler should answer in two words without saying anything unnecessary, and also told them in the future never to remember today's day and the fact that the butler was teaching Grazia. The Duke turned to the girl and told her that if anyone asked her about the large fireball, she should answer that she had copied the wizard who had attacked them. He also informed her that she could safely add that she wanted to be just as strong. The man explained that a genius is someone who easily does what others try for hundreds of times, and it doesn't matter from whom the girl learned it, it's enough that she decided to use it herself. And now he decided to go to the palace, as he felt it was better that they were the first to report the awakened power. The girl said that she wanted to be stronger than that wizard, and next time she would protect her mother. The Duke explained that she was already able to do that, even though it was ten years later. The girl promised to be stronger than herself after ten years. The man then explained to the girl that she better not worry about how to protect someone, but how to prevent the situation from having to protect. Therefore, if the girl wanted to, she could become stronger than herself after ten years. After that, the Duke realized that it was time to pack. The girl was once again in the Imperial Palace. She noticed that there were fewer people this time than last time. The Duke greeted His Majesty the Emperor, after which the Emperor allowed the man to raise his head. The Emperor asked how he felt after burning the garden their ancestors cherished. 
the girl was surprised to learn that it was a very significant garden. The Duke then explained that he knows that the Lucifalo mansion is of great importance to the imperial family. The man realizes that he has a responsibility to preserve and maintain it. Therefore, he apologized for Grazia. The Emperor wondered why this had happened in the first place. The Emperor expressed to the Duke that he was overprotective of his child. The Duke realized that whatever he said now would backfire, so Grazia could speak to lessen the consequences. Then he asked the girl to tell. The Emperor began to listen intently. The girl came forward and confessed that she didn't know she could use magic with such ease. Why the girl looked at the Duke hoping that she had said everything correctly. But here the Duke was already pouring seven sweats, and then the girl doubted if she had done everything right. Then the Emperor asked the girl if she wanted to try it herself. She admitted that she wanted to copy the magic of the wizard who had attacked them. The Emperor knew that using magic was not easy at all, so he asked the girl if anyone had trained her. The girl gave a negative answer. She explained that she didn't know the reason, but it was forbidden to study magic herself. Then the Emperor asked her why she decided to use magic since she could have hurt someone in the garden. The girl then explained that her maid was afraid of bugs. She just thought of using magic, but didn't know she could do it. Then the woman spoke up. She was sure that using magic without training was a complete absurdity since even Archmage Lucifalo had a mentor. So the woman began to argue that the princess had used her ability and summoned herself from the future. The girl tried to explain that this was not the case at all. Then the empress spoke up explaining that a princess from the future had no reason to set the garden on fire. But the queen replied that you never know what will happen 10 years from now. After all, no one knew if the girl was a genius or a liar, as the princess's powers are special. Therefore, she should be careful. The empress expressed that the paradox was that the queen thought she couldn't be trained in magic, but they all saw her from the future as an imperial mage knight. The Empress asked the Queen not to persecute the promising young knight. The Emperor decided to intervene in this altercation and said that the Queen was partly right in her thinking, but too harsh on the Princess. The Emperor also said that the Empress should admit that she was rude to the Queen and she should apologize. Suddenly, another girl spoke up. She said that everything should be scrutinized. The girl wanted to know if the Princess could fight, use magic, so she suggested to check everything here and now. Then it would be possible to judge who was right and who was not quite right. Then the emperor asked what if Grazia couldn't do it? When the girl informed that the true intentions of the Lucifalo family must be found out, if they just turn a blind eye to it, must be found guilty. The girl added that if the princess lied, then the princess's psychological problems should be taken into consideration. The Empress expressed that it was the right precaution. The Queen then spoke out again to the Emperor to see if anyone had taught the Princess magic. The Emperor explained that he had already listened to her opinion and postponed the Princess's magical training. He also added that it was not to check her mental health, but so that she could recover from the attack. The Emperor realized that magic was dangerous, so he felt that training was necessary so that Princess Grazia could control her powers. The man explained that young children could cause harm without malice, and Grazia was an example of that. The emperor believed that when it came to magic, the princess was no different than a newborn child. So he asked her to first go to the night mages to test her magic, and we can talk about education later. After several night mages entered the room, the emperor ordered to teach the princess to use magic that is not dangerous. The girl approached the girl and said that she was happy to meet her also introduced herself with the name Chena. The girl extended her hand in return. Sina asked the Grace if she had ever seen fireworks, but the girl gave a negative answer. The girl then suggested making stars together. Sina asked the girl to close her eyes and visualize the stars well, and then repeat the words after her. To be fair, the girl promised not to use magic, and the girl herself would guide her. After that, Grazia began to repeat the spell, and everything around lit up with a bright light, the princess's magic was beautiful. The emperor confirmed that the princess could use magic and repeated again that the queen was too harsh on children, especially Prince Vanen. The queen felt ashamed and wanted to explain, but the emperor wouldn't listen to her. 
The emperor said that Princess Grazia Lucifalo's talent has been confirmed and he gives permission for her to learn magic. In addition, the emperor appointed one of the mage knights who would be friendly to the Lucifalo family as a teacher and decided that it was time to end there. But before doing so, he called Duke Lucifalo to follow him. A maid came to the girl and said that she would show her where to rest while the duke's audience with his majesty the emperor was taking place. The butler thought it was great that one of the magical knights would be the girl's mentor, since knights were the kind of people who were known for their skill and honor. Plus, they swore allegiance to his majesty the emperor, so the girl is definitely among the chosen disciples. Grazia nibbled on a cookie and thought it sounded very mature. The butler was sure that his majesty would take care of everything, because now everyone knew that Miss Grazia was favored by the emperor. The butler hoped that no one else would dare to contact them, but the most important thing for the girl right now was that these cookies were delicious. The butler said that if this was a favor in the future, could develop into a friendship with the emperor, then it was a good sign. Then the girls wondered what it meant that the queen was too harsh on children. Only the butler wanted to explain, as suddenly the empress entered the room and wanted to tell everything herself. The duke told the emperor that at the risk of saying rude things, he wanted to be honest with him. The man confessed that he hoped Grazia would not be drawn into the struggle for the throne. The emperor explained that there are princesses who have no business being on the imperial throne, but they too are desperately fighting for their lives. The duke then explained that Grazia was not a member of the imperial family, but the emperor explained that she was already being targeted. The duke knew that his majesty was not involved in the fight for the legacy, but he so wanted Grazia to receive as little attention as possible. But in front of everyone, the girl had gained the emperor's favor, and now Grazia's life was even more in danger. The emperor told the duke that he was a little mistaken. The man didn't understand what the emperor meant. The emperor explained that it was not he who first showed his favor, but the princess herself, saying that she would be sure to beat him at chess in the future. The man remembered this. The emperor said that the princess was destined by fate to have a hard life. The emperor realized that it was not easy, but suggested that the duke believe in the princess. The man explained that there was still a place in his heart where a father worried about his child.